not to avoid, ignore, or suppress our anxious thoughts or feelings. Rather, accept our, the emotions that we're going through at the time. And we're going to talk about some strategies on how to cope with those emotions. And also try and keep things in perspective, in perspective and notice the challenges and thoughts uh, that may be extremely uh, triggering or difficult or extremely unhelpful. So one way you can try to keep track of that is even a thought record or tr keeping track of what mood you're experiencing. How do you feel when you wake up? Uh, labeling or identifying that mood at the time uh, to know, you know the next steps you might be going towards. So if you have a very busy day that day or you're really anxious about something, uh, doing different things to try to um, alter or avoid or assert yourself in ways that is helpful to yourself and those around you. So what is stress management? It's in, just like chronic pain management or, or any sort of self-management, it's how to uh, basically manage the things that we're thinking, our awareness, um, and basically how to work with the stressors that we're experiencing to regain control. Everyone experiences stress. Stress is there for a purpose. Sometimes that stress, though, uh, becomes overwhelming, and uh, we need to relieve some of that pressure, and we need to cope with those stressors. So um, effective stress management uh, basically doesn't allow that stress to take over our productivity, our happiness, um, our health. And it's a complex process uh, that involves you know, the way we think, our thinking patterns, unhelpful thinking styles, our self-awareness, um, our self-discipline, and that means managing the things we have to do every day and also managing the things that are coming at us with our environment and also our commitment to ourselves in terms of making this process a little bit easier for ourselves and getting other people involved as well. So the first thing I wanted to mention, like I said before, is self-awareness is key. We have to have insight into what we're experiencing physiologically and what we're thinking and understand our personal triggers. So our personal triggers or stressors could be very different for, for a lot of different people. So for example, someone who already experiences or has a diagnosis of some sort of anxiety disorder, um, for example, OCD, it, like, it might exacerbate their, their symptoms in some ways, learning that there's uh, encouragement of social distancing or hand washing or basically promoting those behaviors that might be sometimes unhelpful for certain people with an actual diagnosis of an anxiety disorder. Um, knowing your signs and symptoms, knowing what your triggers might be during the day, knowing when you feel best, knowing when you're not feeling your best, um, your behaviors and thoughts and how you actually manage your behaviors and manage your relationships and manage those thoughts that you're having, um, and also coping strategies. So one of the coping strategies on managing stress is something called the, actually there's four A's in this, the ABCs of stress management, and I'm just going to go over them really quick. So the first part is to acknowledge your stressors. So we can't change what we don't acknowledge. And that's kind of about the self-awareness. The second part is to avoid. That does not mean avoiding the stressor completely because we can't always avoid stressors that come uh, into our lives. But that means saying no. That means delegating to other people if possible. And that means knowing our limits. Because sometimes we go beyond our limits and that's when we don't feel our best and that's where uh, it's really hard to cope with stressors. The next part of the ABCs is to alter. So that means being assertive with people, knowing what our boundaries are, asking for help, or organizing um, our time and using proper time management skills uh, to help us basically achieve what we need to achieve or knowing what we need to let go and ask for help. And the last part is to accept, and that is accepting that stress and change is a part of life. And sometimes it's really, uh, hard to avoid, alter, acknowledge, and when we still have that constant stress that we're feeling is to accept that that's what we're experiencing and to be really kind and compassionate to ourselves during that time because usually we don't realize how stressful things are until maybe a week later when we're like, wow, that was a really difficult time in our life. And the next part is to build coping strategies. So there's a lot of coping strategies that can be built. So relaxation techniques, things for your physical health. So ensuring that if you can go for a walk or if you can do something for your physical health, even take the dog out or walk around the backyard or down the street um, is something productive and we're getting uh, some fresh air. It, it's not a day like this, I don't know if it's raining where you are, but 
maybe doing something around the house that gets your, um, maybe some stretching techniques or doing some yoga. Goal setting and nurturing relationships in our spirituality is also very important in terms of coping. So being around people that support you um, and are also maybe even going through the same thing you are and just being around those people. Um, and also change our way of thinking and knowing that we not to have unreasonable expectations on ourselves. So with all this adaptation and change with work, with, with everything that we're dealing with, um, hearing things on the news, every day there's something new. Um, knowing what expectations are set for ourselves and, and for other people in our lives. And sometimes those expectations aren't always met. So just being aware of what those are and maybe altering them if you have to. So strategies to maintain um, your mental health during COVID pandemic is, like I said, kindness and compassion towards yourself and others is, is very, very important during this time uh, because a lot of people are feeling anxiety and it's, it's the only thing we can do is just kind of be able to say it's okay where I'm at right now and not to start spinning or thinking unhelpful thinking patterns of catastrophizing, thinking about the worst or um, being basically in a panic all the time. So whatever helps you, whether that's even self-care like a shower or, or taking some time to, to watch a show for a moment to distract yourself. Just to remember, know, like everyone is trying to do the best they can at this time, and everyone feels this collective sense of being overwhelmed. Um, so, so just touching base with other people and keeping connected and having those conversations uh, to know that we're all in this together. So, so one of the first strategy I'd like to talk about, and I did mention some of the things already, uh, but to point at home, basically is that accepting some anxiety, fear, and worry is going to be normal all this time. And so always try to just manage as much as you can uh, and be kind to yourself and release what you cannot change. So if you're having thoughts that you're worried that maybe you will get sick or someone else you, you love will get sick, or if you're dealing with that right now, knowing that sometimes we have to put things in other people's hands and we could just do as much as possible we can do such as social distancing and um, taking care of our loved ones as much as possible in this really really difficult time um, and letting go of some of that control and uh, it's like a lot of us have lost a lot of the control we've had during during the day in our lives because of this whole pandemic and uh, that's really hard to let go of um, because we don't know what's going to happen but we're just hopeful that the actions we're taking today are going to uh, be positive in the long term and so we're all kind of waiting for that and that anticipation can be difficult but we have to let go of that because we don't know what's going to happen in the future so we all we can focus on is this moment right now and and in the immediate future of, of what we can do today so the second strategy to maintain mental health is to take action so Recommended precautions, like I mentioned, use reliable sources when you're finding out the news and what is recommended through the World Health Organization, Health Canada, Ontario Ministry of Health, and our local public health unit. I would rely on those, those sources. There's a lot of uh, information online and on social media that is not accurate. So please use reliable sources and uh, understand the actual risk to yourself. So if you're finding that you're overwhelmed or stressed and you wanna take that assessment for yourself or you wanna help someone do the assessment with someone else and just knowing that that's what you can do and that's what's in your control, uh, it's just going through that and, and basically maintaining that, you know, that that's where you are. And if, if you do need extra help, you could also use Telehealth Ontario and other things like that that are put in place that it will ensure that um, maybe that some of that anxiety would be uh, relieved a little bit. So just remain focused on what you can control and just use reliable sources uh, that are um, updated every day, such as the public health unit. The next thing is to stay connected with family and friends. So maintaining your social connections is crucial. We are privileged and lucky because a lot of us are able to socially distance ourselves. Uh, we're not a lot of us aren't dealing with homelessness. Uh, we're not um, put in positions where housing uh, is put at risk. So I find that social distancing is, is definitely a privilege. So it's really difficult to social distance where we're so used to uh, getting into our cars, going somewhere, and um, basically having the freedom to do whatever we'd like and connect with other people face to face. So now we have to adapt and use things such as FaceTime, 
um, Microsoft uh, Teams, uh, Google Hangouts. There's also a really interesting app called House Party. Uh, so that app allows you to play trivia on, through video with, with people that have the app as well. So I definitely re recommend House Party for anyone who would like to play some games with, with loved ones on, online. And also map out your important resources ranging from daily necessities to uh, emergency management. So that could be just like having a plan for one person if they have to definitely go to the store or do something like that, then um, that's just having a plan with, with the people around. But if you're by yourself, just using precautions. So another thing is how do we build our resiliency when we're feeling overwhelmed? Uh, Self-care is a critical point uh, of building resiliency for ourselves because that's how, if we don't take care of ourselves, we, we can't really do much for anyone else. So um, we sometimes have to ask for help even though we don't want to. Um, but just staying close emotionally, checking in on this loved one. If you could do something for the loved one, I would recommend doing a thing, make a meal and drop it off at their home on their porch or something like that. Leaning on each other, ensuring that we all get enough sleep. If one person has a bad day, um, don't, you know, being kind to them and compassionate. Uh, if you're having a bad day, being compassionate towards yourself, eating healthy, exercising, engaging in any sociable or enjoyable activities in the home if you're with other people, maybe have it playing a board game or doing something like that. And do things that typically support your mental health. So don't lose your routine. Also try to just keep your routine as much as, as normal as possible while you're at the home. Unfortunately, if you are working from home, a lot of people have noticed that they're pulled in so many directions and they're ending up working longer uh, because they have to take care of, let's say their children or they have to cook a meal. Uh, so it's just that organizing our time as much as possible so we can kind of allow ourselves to do what we need to do for work, but also letting go of some of the things that maybe we're not um, able to do and maybe we're not as productive as before, but that's all right because we do have a lot of things to manage at once. So, and help others if you can, like I mentioned. Um, most of like you, most of the things you can do from your couch really is kind of easy. We're lucky that we have the technology we do. So that could be just texting, touching base, uh, sending something funny to someone, um, video calling. And studies indicate that uh, the very act of being back to the community boosts your happiness, health, and sense of well-being. So anything that you can do. Uh, some examples are, you know, people are, are sewing masks or they're providing items to neighbors that they have extra of and they know someone's in need. Um, those are just examples, but there's so many others where just kind of touching base saying, hey, I didn't forget about you, how are you doing? And that's hard sometimes because if we're not doing well, it's really hard to step out of that. That's why self-care is so important because we, when we feel good, it's a lot easier to be there for someone else. And then take really good care of yourself, both physically, mentally, in general. So just like I mentioned, self-care, if you're having trouble speaking to someone that you trust, positive relationships, um, and knowing that the more we can kind of help each other and the more we take care of ourselves at this time, uh, the more able we're going to be able to deal with any sort of anxiety or fear that's going to come towards us because we'll be a little bit more prepared. So as I mentioned, sleeping well, sleep is very important. So think about how many hours of sleep you're getting up each night. Um, it's it's very it's a huge indicator. I know a lot of people have not been sleeping well, or they're sleeping for a few hours, and then they wake up in the middle of the night and start thinking about things. It's hard for them to go back to sleep. So, can you implement some some a, a sleeping routine where you you start to go to sleep at the same time every day, even if you wake up, maybe getting up, doing something else, maybe writing down what you're experiencing, what you're thinking about, put it in a way on your right stand saying, I'm not going to think about this anymore and trying to go back to sleep using some deep breathing techniques, some relaxation um, is, very, is very helpful. And not every day are we going to get a great night's sleep and that's okay, that's not expected. But if we, if we don't get uh, some sleep and uh, some good quality of sleep, it's really, really hard to go on with our day. Um, eating well, so, you know, we are lucky we can still get essential items in the store uh, and we can, you know, ensure that we're getting fruits and vegetables uh, in our diets and trying to fill our body appropriately if possible. And our diets probably have changed because of what's available in the store. So just being mindful of that and um, just doing our best in, in terms of adaptation to what our meals might look like. But 
um, a lot of people I've spoken with have been cooking a lot and have been making meals with their uh, family members or just even if they're by themselves, uh, ensuring that they spend some time cooking for themselves and making something that they really enjoy eating. And exercise, so aerobic exercise, if there's so many exercise videos and yoga things on, online that you could uh, watch on your phone or on your TV. Uh, it increases endorphins, it makes you feel better, improves your sleep and self-esteem. So any sort of exercise you can do uh, would be very beneficial. And the grounding tips for changing time. So I, like I mentioned, journaling. If you're having thoughts that are very difficult, you write down how you're feeling, identify your moods. Uh, gratitude, gratitude journals are, are very useful. There are studies that show that people who write down three things they're grateful for every day for six months had an increase, a 9% increase in their rates of uh, perceived happiness. So I would take the 9% if I just practice gratitude every day, or even just sharing gratitude with another person and saying thank you if someone makes you a coffee or uh, takes some time to do something uh, kind for you. And being grateful for what you've done for yourself, whether that's exercising or taking time to meditate or taking time for yourself to do something pleasurable, that's something you may be grateful for. And then looking at all the things that did go right during the day, instead of focusing on the one negative thing that might have not gone right. Uh, breathing and meditation, moving, uh, and taking of media mindfully. I'm gonna go into that a little bit later, actually Jenny will. Uh, and like mentioned, in con connecting with the community, even connecting with people that you might know that aren't in Canada, uh, connecting with people on Skype uh, if you have uh, loved ones overseas and seeing how they're doing as well. And uh, cutting back on the amount of time you spend on social media, so this is what I want to get into. Uh, please take time to unplug. All that information is can be very overwhelming to ourselves. And physiologically, we could just start uh, having increased heart rate. If we're reading a lot of information, it's gonna be triggering to us, disconnecting from outlets, maybe not using, um, social media for half the day and then maybe checking once a day on the updates um, and using that reliable source. And then doing fun and healthy things online uh, like the trivia games like I mentioned. Um, and also uh, just not watching too many news sources from too many things because things keep changing and the information we get is so different and, and varied. So um, just basically be mindful of your social media usage and turn off notifications on your phone. And even if you notice that a certain ringtone or a certain um, text message tone is causes you a little bit of stress. Changing the sound of that tone, uh, changing the sound of the notification, um, or turning off the notifications in general on the device would, would be helpful as well. And then a sense of humor can be an amazing line of defense. So this too shall pass. It might pass like a kidney stone, but it will pass. So kind of after, you know, when things are very difficult, sometimes all we have is humor uh, to make the most out of it. So there's a lot of funny videos of people, you know, at home dancing or singing um, or doing things that really uh, um, are a lot of fun together. So whether you're watching those videos or if you want to incorporate fun things at home yourself, um, watching <clears throat> uh, comedies, watching funny animal videos on YouTube, any of that, that boosts your um, sense of well-being, even smiling, sends uh, information to your brain that things are okay. So notice how, how your um, body actions are and, and whether you're tense or stressed. And if you find that you are feeling that way, maybe disconnecting, distracting yourself with something funny. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now and I'm gonna pass it on to Jenny. Hi everyone, I am muted myself. Um, hello, I am going to pick up where Evelina left off. Uh, for those of you that were um, with me yesterday on the webinar, you know I had a fun day yesterday. My battery died outside. I was going to show everyone. Can everyone see that? I hope you can. Um, so again, in terms of humor, Evelina and I had a couple of videos ready to make everyone laugh, but what's really sad is that it was really choppy. Um, so we're going to send those off later today in a link. Um, something that I started doing last night, and I'm not sure if anybody would find this enjoyable. 
at all. But uh, I'm not one for those new apps, uh, TikTok specifically. But I do have um, I do have some young cousins that have told me you have to just go on TikTok. Well, long story short, I did last night, and I laughed so hard that I was crying, and it felt so good. And what 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 was I laughing about? Like Evelina mentioned, there's this dogs, um, uh, cats, pets, and uh, a lot of TikTok videos now of uh, children trying to um, distract their parents while working from home. Um, again, if you don't have TikTok, just sign up. I promise you, I laughed like, and it was a heart, it was a great belly laugh. And sometimes that really does alleviate the stress that we're carrying. Um, and I mentioned yesterday, um, you know, you are your world's expert in where do you carry your stress? Where do you feel it? How does your body let you know, I'm, I'm not doing so good today? Is it your body? Is it your emotions? Um, are you starting to feel like you can't focus, you can't concentrate? A big one that usually comes up when I, you know, I ask individuals, how do you know when you're feeling stressed? And a lot of people will say <laughs> irritability. And that is absolutely right. So get to yourself, what are those signs that are alerting you? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling really stressed. And something as simple as just having a nice hearty laugh can really alleviate some of that and really does send those happy, those happy uh, neurotransmitters, those happy things going into our brain. So that's something definitely. Um, I, again, I spoke and Evelina has spoken really well in terms of, you know, when we are, you know, dealing and trying to man manage all of these emotions. And, um, you know, it, it's hard. Uh, we put a poll out yesterday. Day because we really want to, know, to hear in terms of what interests you for the next upcoming webinar. And uh, right now we've had an astounding result in regards to a lot of individuals out there want us to do a webinar strictly on understanding our emotions. Because right now, Oh, the amount, the amount of emotions, I call it that roller coaster that I experience within a day can range from, you know, worry, you know, unhelpful, catastrophizing those what if, scared, fear, um, you know, loneliness, uh, feeling just a little bored. I mean, I could go on and on about, you know, boredom and to my youth out there that are in, you know, right now, gee, it's a really hard time, you know, um, our youth are so, you know, their social connections with their peers, their friends, it's such an important connection for our youth. And, you know, they don't have that right now. So, you know, helping your child, your, your youth, just just calling those feelings out for what they are and validating and, and letting someone know, wow, you know, it's okay that you're feeling this way. We're not going to have those answers. We're not going to be able to um, alleviate some of those intense emotions that somebody might be experiencing, but just being able to help someone process and understand and maybe name the emotion for them. Because if it is what they're feeling, usually what you'll get is, oh yeah, that's what I'm feeling. It's like a aha moment. And that helps instantly um, on, on both fronts. It's going to help you uh, alleviate your own stress because you're providing the compassion care to someone else and it's helping them as well so that's something that we can definitely um, help each other with and you know the way we react right our perspective um, what we are doing on our day to day the way we react to stress really does have um, a greater impact overall emotional mental physical health um, and success than the actual stressor itself, right? Um, and you know, I, 
I, I'll be honest, I, I saw this beautiful quote last night and it was all about um, optimism. Um, geez, I forget the word, but it was a beautiful article from the New York Times with a, a fabulous quote. I've, I've scheduled the post on our Facebook later tonight and a lot of studies are pointing to um, you know, we're not asking individuals out there to say, yay, I'm going to be positive and optimistic during um, this pandemic, this crisis, this uncertain time. We're not asking for that. We are asking for, you know, just ground yourself in hopeful optimism on things you can focus on, things that are within your control, things that you can manage. Um, and when we're able to do that, it helps us get through um, that, that big stress that we're all under right now, that uncertainty. And what we want to really try to, our, our best to do is focus on what gives you purpose, what, what connects you um, here in the now, right? Um, so valuing and focusing that on, you know, what you value, what is pre precious to you, what's important to you right now, and maybe I'll flip it, uh, focusing on what we're able to control a bit, right? That semblance of having a fe feeling like we have that normal feedback. Um, our anxiety, our worry, our stress starts to increase. Um, slowly, when we start to feel that we have no control over anything. Um, so ground yourself and bring back that focus into things that bring you a sense of joy and peace. Um, and again, you are your world's expert. Whatever you did prior uh, to COVID-19, uh, you know, really try to, you know, get that back into your day-to-day -day routine. Or let's say you've tried that and you're thinking right now, you know what, I tried it, I can't focus. You know what, you are your world's expert, so you know that now is the time to be creative. I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm an avid reader. Love, love, love reading. Uh, for the past two weeks, I've not been able to get into my reading schedule. And so I've been, I've been changing my script a bit in terms of accessing more tools in my coping strat, like in my toolbox for coping strategies. So now I find that I'm focusing on puzzles <laughs> um, and coloring and painting. I'm not an artist, but um, it's just pulling from that toolbox of resources. Um, and don't get to if you find that those coping strategies that you had prior to COVID-19 are just not doing it, get creative, call a friend, um, you know, try some of the strategies that we've laid out, um, access some ch support groups or virtual chats uh, that we'll get into later as well. And again, you know, we want to definitely encourage again, you know, it's... <laughs> What we're striving for right now in this time of uncertainty is by no means stability. Um, what we're trying to find is just getting to a place where we're trying to bring back some of that balance back into our day-to-day -day routine that almost feels like it's just been, you know, that rug's been pulled right from underneath us. So, don't expect stability and again, you know, have a game plan and it's absolutely okay that, you know, the night before you just maybe make up a to-do list of things you'd like to focus on for the following day. And if it doesn't work out and you find, oh, today is really bad, I'm really stressed, I'm, you know, focused on my worries or I'm just, I don't have the time or energy, then guess what? Be kind to yourself and accept that it's okay not to have a good day. That's the day that you increase all those self-care activities that can really just, you know, allow yourself to feel those emotions and get through a day that might be pretty stressful. Another 
a tool is to really start to incorporate mindfulness into our day-to-day um, activity. So for those of you that are familiar with mindfulness, mindfulness really just means, you know, maintaining that moment by moment awareness of thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, your surrounding environment in a non-judgmental way. And when I say non-judgmental way, um, you know, I could ask a question to everyone out there right now. What are you feeling right now? Please don't think boredom. (laughs) What if you're bored listening to me? Okay, no, just joking. Okay, so um, right now I'm feeling connected. Every time I'm doing a webinar, I know this sounds very weird, even though I'm looking at my computer and a green dot staring right at me on my laptop, (laughs) um, I feel connected. I feel connected because I'm here in the present moment and I know that there's about 40 of you listening in and I feel connected. So mindfulness can be as simple as naming an emotion, being in the present moment, not judging what you're feeling, what you're aware of, what you're sensing. It, it, it's in a jo- non-judgmental way, right? So if we, we see a different slide, here we go. So the purpose of mindfulness is really just to get ourselves back in that present moment. Because the reason that mindfulness is so Um, wonderful as a strategy to really reduce our anxiety, our worry and stress is because when we are focused on stress or anxiety or worry, where are we usually? We're usually lost in thought, right? Where our mind is focused on that what if thinking. Um, We're focused on a stressor, we're focused on the future or past or the unknown, where when we start grounding ourselves in mindfulness, what we're just doing is we're purposefully attending, paying attention to that present moment. And we're just noticing what's going around, becoming aware. And when we're able to practice that, it really does. This does oodles and oodles of research um, documenting that mindfulness really does um, reduce uh, feelings of stress, worry. I I like to say it really does quiet the mind. Um, For those of you that, you know, you find that your mind starts to race or you um, experience those ruminating thoughts or those perseverating some thoughts, Um, that, you know, once you get into it, it's, I I call it the vicious cycle or that tunnel, or, you know, you just get into one thought and it just leads you down a, not a very good tunnel. And, and when we're able to practice mindfulness, to just get ourselves in the here and now for a minute, guess what? For that one second that you're practicing mindfulness, one second, five seconds, one minute, two minutes, uh, it doesn't matter how long you're going to notice that you're not focused on those distressing thoughts, those worries, that stress, right? And it really does help us to think more calmly and clearly. Um, And it helps for problem solving as well. Uh, So I was, I did not do good yesterday on my Zoom webinar last yesterday. So hopefully you're going to hear some wonderful sound right now on a great take five video that um, individuals yesterday could not hear. So I am going to play that video. I'm gonna go like this, fingers crossed, because (laughs) yesterday I did not have a good, oh, okay, wrong wrong one. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm gonna show you a take five video. It's phenomenal. Uh, Do it with your children, your kids, anybody. Um, What we're going to do when we're doing it is that we're simply going to observe our breathing. So every time we're breathing in, right, you can count to five, or, you know, when you're breathing out, right, where do you feel that breath? Notice your lungs expanding, right? And then you can see how for that one second, that 30 seconds, 
five seconds, you are in that present moment. So we're going to try it together. Hey everyone, Corey Mascara. I'm gonna pause it for one second. And Evelina, you give me a thumbs up if you can hear this. Are here. Uh, people are always asking me for, you know, what is a, a simple strategy that I can utilize throughout the day, you know, in addition to my formal meditation practice, just to reground myself, recenter myself. And uh, one thing I learned recently that I've found people seem to love is this strategy called Take Five, which you can do if you only have 30 seconds. So I just want to share it with you here. It's really simple. I say we, we do it together. Take out your left hand and just place it in front of you like this. And I want you to take your right pointer finger and place it right in the palm of your hand, right around your wrist. Now what we're gonna do is slide the pointer finger up the thumb. And as we do, take an inhale through the nose and then slide back down with an exhale. Slide up the pointer finger, inhale. And then back down, exhale through the mouth. Slide up the middle finger, inhale. Back down, exhale. Ring finger, inhale. Back down. And then pinky finger. And back down. All right, so let's take five. If you were feeling really ambitious and you had a ton of time on your hands, you could do take 10 and you do it on the other side as well. You know, this is a simple strategy that you can utilize really at any point throughout the day when you first wake up, while you're at work, while you're in the bathroom, before you go to bed, it really doesn't take that much longer than 30 seconds. And there's, there's something about the tactile nature of this, of sliding the finger up, feeling the sensations of the hand, and then syncing that with the breath that really does seem to engage the parasympathetic nervous system and help settle us in. That's my favorite. Um, that's how I was introduced to mindfulness, so congrats for all of you that uh, tried the take five and noticed that for that 30 seconds, you were just following Gord teaching us the take five. Congratulations, you just participated in mindfulness. Um, so another way that you can do mindfulness and that mindfulness, and this is usually, um, what I encourage um, parents, uh, caregivers uh, to do is create your own self-soothing first aid kit. Um, and you can do that really easily with your five senses. So for example, let's say we start coloring. Um, start coloring, what are you doing? Well, feel, feel that pencil that you're, you're touching, right? You're looking at coloring within the lines. Let's say you have lavender in a diffuser for those of you that love smells that elicit those, that nice comforting uh, feelings. Um, or for those of you that absolutely love listening to music, um, when we're able to create a self-soothe kit um, using our five senses, it, it's really, um, a good way to really practice mindfulness because we're in that present moment. We're completely, and maybe that's why I've been using, uh, by doing a lot of puzzles <laughs> because I'm so immersed into puzzle. I have no time to focus on those worries or things around me. Um, I know this slide is a little, little small. I will be sending everybody all the PDFs, but uh, for those of you listening um, that are uh, parents that, you know, you know, you've been really stressed out about how do I explain everything that's going around um, in regards to COVID-19 to my children. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to tell you like a specific, do this, don't do that. You know your children best. And you just listen to your child, have conversations, um, you know, and just have a conversation with your child at the appropriate age level. Um, the easiest way to have this conversation might be, do, might be when you're playing a board game or helping them with homework. <laughs> For those of you that uh, have tried to homeschool, <laughs> 
Um, yeah, that's fun too, right? So um, focus on their safety. Uh, pay attention to your own reactions. And I think that's probably the reason why I really wanted to um, just shed light on this, right? Our children, um, you know, our teenagers, our kids, our, our pets even, um, you know, they pick up on our emotions. So our children might be watching us carefully and taking cues from, you know, how we're managing our stress levels, how we're feeling about this situation. And it's okay if, you know, maybe your child asks you something about the pandemic and, you know, it's okay to say, yeah, it is scary. I'm scared too. But again, you want to reassure your child in all the precautions that you as a family unit have been taking to, to let them know, you know, we're safe. This is what we're doing to help. And that's why we're practicing um, everything that our, you know, the um, Health Canada, our local health unit, we are abiding by all that things to help us um, create that safety and minimize that uh, for children. Um, I believe it was the Netherlands. I can't remember. Um, a phenomenal. They actually had a press conference for children um, because we, we can't ignore the fact that our children and youth are also experiencing a lot of stress and, you know, their, um, their daily routine had just been flipped upside down as well. Um, so monitor access to media, right? Um, for, for our young children, you know, we definitely, you know, want to be mindful if we're watching the news, um, you know, they might be hearing it in the background and it might be ex extremely frightening for a child, um, you know, so there actually is some really awesome videos right now on YouTube. Um, uh, I will remember, I'm going to jot that down to actually send them. And I had my, I have an eight year old uh, daughter and we watched some YouTube videos uh, done by some physicians and it was pretty awesome. It explained about coronavirus. Um, so it was great. So watch for behavior changes, um, you know, to just to make sure your child or youth still doing okay. And, you know, again, Keep that door open. Always encourage that open conversation with your child to come to you at any point in time to, you know, to ask questions. Um, I always find the best time, and I think this is strategic for children, um, right before bed. Any of you out there, parents, have you noticed your child just wants to tell you about their whole life story right before bed? And I think that is, uh, <laughs> that's their way of uh, staying up a little later. So again, um, I saw this. Uh, I saw this today, and I just smiled because really, you know, managing our stress right now. I think we have to really acknowledge that it's okay um, to not know how to homeschool. It's okay to not know how to work from home or to make a colorful daily schedule <laughs> or to magically feel motivated to work. Um, to work at home or to try exercising at home or taking on a new hobby or to not feel okay. Oh my goodness, I cannot stress enough the importance that <laughs> this is all new to all of us. So it, it, this is, you know, this pandemic, the, the time we're living in, it, it's not normal for any of us in terms of, you know, if there's a lot going on right now. We have to absolutely be kind to ourselves, be kind to others, um, really increase that compassion, that empathy, that kindness, and, and really don't be hard on yourself. Uh, true story, yesterday I was really, really <laughs> stressing out about um, all this homework that you know I'm getting uh, curriculum for my child. And yeah, I'm going to go with, it's okay that I do not know how to homeschool my child. So there you go. Um, okay, so last but not least, I'm just gonna review some, uh, my, our last tip. And absolutely, 
seek extra help or support when you need it. If you're noticing your symptoms of anxiety, um, anything, for those of you that are listening that have um, a mental illness and you've noticed those symptoms start to become really exacerbated um, in association with COVID-19 or any other uh, major stressor going on right now um, that has resulted because of COVID-19. It's causing significant distress and it's really interfering with that day-to-day -day functioning. Please, 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 I strongly encourage you to reach out and, and, and get that support. And you know, how does that happen? And it can happen as easily as calling 211 and just saying, I need to get in contact with mental health supports. It can be as easily as connecting to our Crisis and Mental Wellness Center. Um, they are still doing walk-in appointments, but I will encourage everyone um, to call prior. Uh, so they are doing, um, first, they want to have a phone session um, through the 973-4435 number. And, you know, what we are trying to do with our collaboration with Hotel Zoo and um, CMHA is really just have one phone number so that you're not calling and telling someone this is what's going on and someone tell you, oh, okay, well, why don't you call CMHA or um, Family Services or the, we don't want that. Uh, that's why there's one number and that's our crisis number in Windsor call crisis it is answered by a crisis worker and that's just to ensure that you are good and it's not an imminent crisis um, that requires medical assistance immediately and that crisis worker is going to talk to you and help you navigate you know what are you looking for do you need supports do you need further supports you know and they can help make those connections to all of our absolutely wonderful community pro uh, partners out there that are you know, essential and still very much providing care out in our community right now. <clears throat> um, so uh, this is a slide that uh, CMHA uh, just really decided to you know, ensure what is your need and what can you do? So again, we are still open. CMHA workers are still um, having all their contact with individuals that are in care. Um, and that is right now via phone um, sessions. So in an effort to keep everyone safe, appointments are scheduled. They are taking place over the phone. Um, for any of you out there uh, or individuals that know individuals that are, you know, currently receiving injections, that injection clinic is still open at the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center. It's still operating for all existing individuals um, that were um, there prior to COVID-19. Um, and for anything else, you know, please don't hesitate. Call us at CMHA. 255-7440 or call again the Crisis and Mental Wellness Center. So I am going to, wow, I talk too much. So any questions, if anybody would like to start, I'm just going to do two, three more slides. Again, we have Bounce Back. Bounce Back is all online. Um, and you get to do this from the comfort of your home. It is for mild to mild to moderate, sorry. Yeah, mild to moderate symptoms relating to anxiety, stress, or low mood. Um, there's a toll-free number. I highly encourage anybody just bounceback.ca. And on the website, you will see all the different modalities. We have Bounce Back is adapted uh, from the UK, and this is a skill-building program. Uh, that is really based on cognitive behavioral therapy, and you can do this all within the comfort of your home. The next one is Big White Wall. Big White Wall is an online peer-to-peer -peer mental health platform. Uh, within the wall, fabulous, there's online courses, there's tutorials, 
reels. There are uh, support chat groups. Uh, everything is completely monitored 24 hours a day. Uh, clinicians, therapists as well uh, for your safety and for others. And again, last but not least, um, I'm, I, I totally forgot to have mentioned this yesterday. So kids help phone. Uh, for any parents out there, for any that are listening in right now, don't hesitate. Kids help phone, phenomenal. They have a texting. Texting is simple as 686868. And, you know, for those of you that are having difficulty at night, you find yourself waking up three, four in the morning and, you know, you just wake up suddenly and you start feeling stressed and worried and having a hard time settling back in, you know, that texting is there, right? So usually I, you know, usually we're pretty good during the day sometimes and sometimes at night that's when we don't we we feel like oh i can't bother someone and call them with what's going on well guess what that's why we have all these um completely confidential uh crisis workers hotlines websites to be able to provide support during those times where you know those ones that are really important to you that help you get through those things might be sleeping uh, or unavailable. So texting 686868 or the 1-800 number for parents that are listening in, uh, phenomenal resources um, on the Kids Help Phone website, especially to help uh, teens right now um, really stressed in regards to curriculum online uh, for children as well. And voila. So uh, again, Evelina and I really want to thank everyone uh, for joining us today. Um, you know, we're today's World Health Day. Um, it's fitting that we were able to all come together um, to really, you know, focus not only on our physical health, but our mental health, because we know that that very much is intertwined together. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, Unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Jenny, <clears throat> it's Evelina. I just had a question because on our Twitter page, someone asked whether the slide deck would be available um, and, or, or are we going to be putting the recording uh, on the YouTube page? So great question, Evelina. So um, I've already pre-recorded uh, two webinars. I am recording this one because we've added some uh, kids info and for parents as well. Uh, so once I have all those links up uh, later today or tomorrow morning, <laughs> I see I'm being kind to myself in terms of deadlines. Um, I'm going to send everyone that has registered for any of the webinars that we've done this far and I will send uh, the link to the YouTube for the pre-recording I will do a slide deck in terms of putting some of the slides in a PDF format. I'm gonna send some great uh, PDF one-page handouts. Um, a lot of the information that I pulled for all of this is through um, uh, CAMH, Kids Help Phone, CMHA National. I'm gonna put that all in an email, so you might be inundated, um, but it'll be, you'll only receive one email from myself or Evelina and you will have everything on there. So feel free to share with others in terms of accessing those pre-recordings via YouTube. And um, stay tuned for our next webinar series. We're, like, we, like I mentioned, we're gonna be um, most likely going to be doing an intro to understanding our emotions uh, for next week, as well as maybe some other topics as well. So uh, thank you again and um, Take care, everyone, and uh, maybe log on to, like I said, create a TikTok account. I laughed. I laughed a lot watching. <laughs> oh, and put it on, um, what did I do? I did uh, kid-friendly, so I was just looking at funny, kid-friendly, appropriate TikToks. <laughs> okay, so um, if there are no other questions, uh, have the rest of a good day, and take care.